Welcome to the Power Talk Show with me, Dominic. And today with me, I've got Nibs College. Make some noise. Yay. Yay. As you can see, these people have been my friends now for very, like, uh, 10 shows plus, And uh, they've been amazing. And I want to thank you all for your support, Nibs. Uh, you know, Samuel back there, I've got... There's, there's some fellow in a suit back there. I'll, I'll be talking to him. Uh, he, he said the suit is his. Um, yeah, but I, I lent it to him, as you can see, we are the people who wear suits. Anyway, it's nice to have you, and today we don't have the band with me because uh, my the, the band director got, got unwell. So, Enoch Masanga, we are praying that you get well. You are admitted recently, and I would want to wish you the very best and best of recovery from uh, the Power Talk Show and from our audience and from our viewers. You are an important member of this convo of this show. And also I was told by uh, one of my friends here, Samuel Njuguna, he told me to say this, that happy birthday to his cousin, Hananjao. Yeah? So Hananjao, a very, very happy birthday. By the way, it was my birthday on Monday. Monday? No, not Monday. Sunday. Yes, Sunday. I'm a Saba Saba child, so happy birthday to me. And I want to thank God also for this show that um, is going now into the third year. We started this in 2017. Yeah. 2017? Yeah. So almost the third year. And uh, I want to thank God for this chance to be here, to share with you, to walk with you. I have, I'm on the third floor right now in terms of my ears. To thank God for the times that I've been here and for the people that I've been able to touch during this conversation, entertain and educate. And I want to thank God for this chance to continue to accompany you. One of the things that I would like to encourage you with is uh, none of us have a right to be weak and loser because God has given us a lot of talent. And if we orient ourselves towards the best goal that God has given us, in spite of the resources that we have, we can get to a point where we become useful not only to ourselves, but to our family and to our society. Once you don't, do not use your talents well, once you do not use what God has given you to the maximum, not only do you become useless to yourself, but you become a burden to your family, you become a burden to society. So do not sit down and complain about the negatives, about what you do not have, but sit down and say, what is the little that I have and how can I maximize on it? And that has been my experience and I want to really believe that you can do the same if you sit down and count your blessings and maximize on what you've got. So today we're going to be talking about emotional abuse and I'm going to be telling you that uh, in a while, but right now we take a short break and I'll be right back. I'm back to the Power Talk Show with me, Dominic. And so today's topic is emotional abuse uh, in relationships. I, I want us to speak about how is it possible that so many of us are going through emotional abuse and what is emotional abuse and how does it happen? And so I'm encouraging you to go to our social media handles, especially Facebook, where there'll be a post about today's show. And uh, I want you to comment there. You can ask a question or make a suggestion or uh, have an opinion there. And I'm going to be reading out those comments, suggestions and uh, opinions on, on this show during the second segment of this interview. So go, go to our social media handles and make sure that uh, your, your opinion is put out there. We're talking about emotional uh, and abuse. Many times we are always speaking about gender-based violence that is actually physical violence. But at times we have a relationship uh, violence that is purely emotional, where there is manipulation, where there is narcissism, and where, they, where the other person makes you feel less than you, uh, th than you actually are. They, they take advantage of you. They want you to do things for them that they can do for them for themselves. So how does it happen? What can it do to you? That would be the conversation of today. So please go to our Facebook page at y 254 channel and comment there. There'll be a post that has been put up there with a the question that I've asked you. And I would like you to put your opinion, comments and questions. And today I have Phyllis Macheria who will be sharing with, uh, with me uh, and with all of you about, uh, about emotional abuse. And I would listen to her, listen to her story. She's a lecturer, uh, part-time lecturer at Nazarene. And she is also an expert in uh, peace uh, advocacy. So she'll be telling us more about herself. So don't go away, we get a short break, and we'll be back for the main conversation. And as I said, we are having the show today and we're talking about emotional abuse. And as I said, my guest today is Phyllis Macheria. Uh, uh, let me stop introducing yourself, you, by the way, please. Go ahead. Uh, Phyllis Macheria. Who is Phyllis Macheria? Phyllis uh, Macheria is, first of all, a mother. I'm a mother to three wonderful children. I have my background in peace and conflict resolution. Um, I am a part-time lecturer at the African Nazarene University where I am in the School of Peace and Governance. Mm -hmm. I also do diplomacy and professional ethics as well. 
Uh, I'm also an enthusiast when it comes to community conversations and dialogues. So I'm in a platform also um, that uh, allows a lot of volunteerism when it comes to venting spaces in mm -hmm. the society mm -hmm. because a lot I mean, it's it's uh, very evident that people need to be talking. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, it's amazing that uh, let me let me play to this stereotype that as a woman you're doing so much. <laughs> all right. So I think. Uh, Thank in, you. In this sense that you're also doing, uh, you, you're giving voice to many girls. Yes. And uh, you, you said you're a mother to three. Yes. Uh, who you just giving them a shout out? Um, I know they're watching. Mm -hmm. So hey, Kamau. Hey, Jerry, come out, that's me. Uh -huh. <laughs> Jerry and Masharia. Jerry and Masharia. Mwah. Ah, wow. How, I love you. <laughs> how, how, how young are they? Six, four, and two. Six, four, and two. Yeah, Amazing. Yeah. Marathon. Marathon, eh? Uli, msa maiki tu nikumale Yeah. Done. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you think, how, how about the audience? The lovely audience, right? They're happy. They're happy and energetic, yeah, right? Yeah, and we're happy. How about the audience? Yeah, and we're <laughs> so welcome to the show. Thank you. And now today we're talking about emotional abuse in the relationships. Yes. And I'm going to ask a very brief question. Have you gone through emotional abuse yourself? Yes. You've gone through it. Yes. What is emotional uh, abuse? And um, uh, first of all, uh -huh. let me also uh, revert to the question you just asked. And I'm sure that um, relates to so many people, the mm -hmm. yes factor, mm -hmm. whether knowingly or unknowingly. So emotional abuse is basically being in a relationship that number one makes you doubt yourself. You really don't know who you are mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. It's also being in a setup where it's uh, you have to always second guess yourself. Am I right? Am mm -hmm. I wrong? Yeah. So basically losing your self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Emotional abuse is also where you find yourself um, exhibiting some signs of depression again, mm -hmm. whether knowingly or oh, not. Yeah, yeah. You might get outside responses that, hey, you don't talk anymore, mm -hmm. you don't come for social gatherings anymore. But also, it's basically when you're not taking care of yourself anymore. You're, you don't, you're not a priority you're anymore. A priority Something anymore. is amiss. So some, somebody has treated you in such a way that you're exhibiting all these signs and symptoms. What, what are some of the behaviors of an emotional abuser? What, what, are, what is he, what's their language? What are their actions? Um, Basically, uh, it's about an attack, and an attack to you as a person, mm -hmm. and a fulfilling or a, or a fulfillment to the abuser. So probably belittle you in any way possible, whether it's to discredit everything that you do, so that you can be quite inferior and they can be superior. Mm -hmm. So those are the major signs. But other than that, there's also personal signs of the abuser as far as their character and personality is concerned. Mm -hmm. Someone who is overly defendant about their being and mm -hmm. existence and at times it's all the benchmark is what they believe when it comes to the universe, that's an abuser. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. So an abuser is someone who does not want you to shine, does not celebrate your successes and sees your su successes almost like a threat to themselves and they constantly want to put you down because by you staying down, it makes them feel good. I would say yes and no. Uh -huh. Yes, because uh -huh. um, theoretically mm -hmm. that's correct. Mm -hmm. But no, because they might verbally mm -hmm. show that they are rejoicing with you. Uh -huh. And they're happy about your milestones. Mm -hmm. But when? It's only when there are people around. Uh -huh. When it's just you and them, most of the time, they're not celebrated. Okay. But for sure, uh -huh. oh, you're the best thing that happened to them. When they are with other people, other people in in public. So th th that's that's quite an interesting thing. So you might go to say my partner is a very harsh person to people, and people are like, but he's so generous. He's always saying nice things about you. Now remember, uh -huh. and I'll I'll go back when we talk of emotional abuse. Remember mm -hmm. these different types of abuse. There's a physical, and you mentioned in your introduction, mm -hmm. with physical abuse, you have an exhibit. I mean, you will show a scar. You will show, you know, you will have a mark. Yeah. With emotional abuse, it's your word against them. Yeah. So it's so profound that they make sure that they have dealt with that arena that you talk about them and mm -hmm. everyone is doubting you as Correct. opposed to doubting them. Because in public, they are darlings, they are sweethearts. But in closed spaces, uh, 
you are the target because you're the only it's like a it's like you're, you're they're feeding off you. Mm -hmm. That's the only way to maintain their ego. And I need, at this point, I need to make a disclaimer. Mm -hmm. We're not just talking about men. Yeah. Okay. There's yeah. men who are also emotionally abused. abused. Yes, absolutely. Yes. That's, a, yeah. that's a good reminder. Yes. So the way you're describing is, is like some, a victim of emotional abuse is like someone in a beautiful castle on the outside, but which is a prison on the inside. Exactly. And, and just a short... Um, definition mm -hmm. now this makes it your narrative as an abused person as well because since they don't believe me mm -hmm. let me be good let me look like i'm fine let me be okay out there let me put up my smile out there but again when you revert to your corner mm -hmm. then now you're sad in that space, you're sad in that space. because mm -hmm. when you're outside as, as much as you might lose yourself gradually but you also still compliment mm -hmm. your abuser mm -hmm. by trying to keep it cool out there yeah correct yeah. because partly as you say maybe nobody will believe you because he has or she has made sure that he or she has a very perfect image out there exactly so there is their chance that people might not believe you exactly but now is it possible to start owning that constant criticism such that now you turn it now towards you, so you have been belittled, you start now belittling yourself already, you start doubting yourself because of your, you're constantly told you're nothing anyway, you're constantly manipulated, so you start doubting yourself and you start performing less and less, is it possible? Very, very possible, mm -hmm. but by the time you realize it, it's never an instant thing. Years can pass by, and I... I I know certain signs of, of, of uh, the fact that you're losing yourself mm -hmm. are not what people expect that I'll be, you know, you'll be crying or you'll be angry. Something as simple as procrastination, that's already a sign that you're not okay. Mm -hmm. People think, you know, you get to a point where you say, for example, I'll give an example of maybe a job application. You're sub there's a deadline, but you find yourself, you're always doing it the last minute mm -hmm. on that specific day. Mm -hmm. Chances are you never used to be like that. But it's because now it's gotten to a point where unknowingly, unconsciously, you don't even care anymore mm -hmm. because you've been invalidated so much. Destroyed your confidence. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what does that do? Indirectly, your brain sleeps mm -hmm. and you're not aware because you've taken in so much pain, so much heartache, and people will always might know you as someone who prospers or is a shine mm -hmm. but they'll wonder then how come you're not moving from point a to, to b, b. Yeah. because your brain slept mm -hmm. you've mm -hmm. been so emotionally abused mm -hmm. your brain is literally just there okay yeah, yeah. Well, and uh, what what in your own, in your opinion what makes people stay in an abusive relationship what makes an, a victim uh, feel as if there is either hope or there's no point of living or you know I think the two that stand out for me, mm -hmm. regardless of the cliché, it's for the children or any other issue, mm -hmm. number one is denial, denial, which makes you procrastinate still on mm -hmm. that issue. Mm -hmm. Number two is false hope. You keep a hope that's not true. Mm -hmm. They will change. I'm, I'm the smart one here. I'll figure it out. I'll know how to deal with this. That is, there is hope and there is false hope. There is hope and there is false hope. So for me, it's mm -hmm. denial mm -hmm. and false hope. False hope. Yeah. Now, what, what can a person do? So maybe let's say there's someone watching you and saying, I think I am in that kind of a relationship. Since I started dating this person, since I got married to this person, my confidence in, is, is just getting lower and lower. I trust myself less. I think I am nothing more and more. I, when I do not like myself and I look at myself at the, in the mirror anymore. I am never celebrated by the person I am thinking should be for me. This is my experience, maybe the person is saying. What, what, what are the steps they could start you know, to take to get out of it? I normally say this and I even tell my students, mm -hmm. you can read all the books in the world, but the back stops with you. This, are, this is a specific situation that honestly you are the key to the beginning. So no amount of counseling, no amount of reconciliation talks or dialogues will help you until you're clear with what you want. And at times they say it's until you've had enough, but remember enough is relative to, you know, to all of us. Mm. 
So it's until you make that decision consciously, not emotionally, consciously and realistically mm -hmm. that I need out or I need to stay. Because something that uh, when you talk about when do you say this is enough or how do you deal with it, mm -hmm. remember there's also a concept of being real with yourself. Right. At times we speak of emotional abuse, mm -hmm. but you're also a contributor. I don't mean that you bash yourself. I mean you be real. So once you have a checklist, have I done all that I'm supposed to do? Correct. If honestly it's a yes, mm -hmm. go to the next question. Mm -hmm. Do I deserve this? Mm -hmm. It's if, if it was yes, then it's going to be no. Yes, you don't correct. deserve it. I don't deserve it. If, and this we're talking about relationships. Mm -hmm. So if it's a relationship, there mm -hmm. must have been a concept of love yeah. and caring, mm -hmm. right? You go to the next question. Is this situation, uh, can it be saved in mm -hmm. this way? Can I also put on his or her shoes as the abuser? Have I done that? Yes, I have done that and now I understand where he's coming from. Correct. But does it give him or her a mandate to, to continue treating me this way? Mm -hmm. There is a checklist that you need to go through. Check, and it's yeah. only mm -hmm. after you sit down and go through that checklist yeah, that you'll yeah. be able to know the next move. Mm -hmm. Your next move could be a counselor, so you hang on until you do a counselor. Your, your next move would be mediation or negotiation. Mm. But depending on the stages you're at, your mm. next move would be to leave. So it depends on where and how alert you are about your situation. Mm -hmm. There is no blanket remedy for mm. everyone. Yeah. It has to be relative and specific. Do you think in your opinion that it's possible to actually remain in the relationship and try to heal it from within or the best way is first of all to separate yourself from it and try to see what you can do before living under the same roof? No, I think both can apply, uh -huh. again depending on the kind of situation you're in. And I'll give a specific examples. Mm -hmm. Normally, more often than not, you can have an e emotional uh, abusive setup and it remains as that. It's just an emotional abuser. Mm -hmm. They'll never touch you. It's, it will never get physical. Now. So they'll make sure there's no evidence that you can show. Exactly. Yeah. But also maybe because it's not in them yeah, to so get to the physical mm -hmm. beat. They're mm -hmm. just emotionally abusive. Mm -hmm. And depending on whether, again, is it something that they are reacting to? It's not just about you as a person, mm -hmm. or is it a past that they are dealing with? They end up being emotionally abusive, mm -hmm. or are they just narcissists? Okay, right. That becomes difficult. Exactly. Mm. So when you when you're aware about your partners, because now we're talking about relationships, yeah, if correct. you're truly aware about the kind of work that they've had, mm -hmm. that will also inform your tolerance levels correct. and where your boundary stops. Mm -hmm. However. The instances where emotional abuse is a red flag to escalation to physical abuse. Yeah. So maybe you stayed through the emotional phase, now it started being physical. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, that's when we're told, uh, Bora Uhai. <laughs> you know, like yeah. it's your life. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. now, literally, not just the cliche talk that we, we mm. say, Bora Uhai, like survival. Now, this one is honestly, Uhai Wako is important. Okay, right. So, at that point, now there's no second guessing, like, should I die or not? Mm. Mm. You know, mm. it's a different ball game. Correct, correct. So, I, I think you, the main issue here is mm. being aware. Being aware. Fight. To at least get to that point that as an individual, mm -hmm. you're aware, mm -hmm. you're alert. Okay. Because remember, when you're in a depressive state, mm -hmm. you're also likely to make very misinformed decisions. Okay. And another thing is try to keep away from group mentality at that particular time. Be yourself. So if you have a committee outside there advising you, they can give you very... Be yourself. Listen, uh, uh, but at the end of the day, make be your yourself. Own decision, yeah. Yeah. Now, maybe you know, someone might say, well, I have not been in a bad relationship, uh, which is emotionally abusive, right? So maybe someone might say that. But they will be asking, how, what, 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 are they, what are the things that I might look for to ensure the person that I'm dating or I want to go into a relationship with is not, uh, does not turn out to be uh, emotionally abusive? Are there some things to watch out for at the very initial stages of the relationship? Um, yes and no. Mm -hmm. There are red flags, especially if you're dating. Um, and that takes us back to the question, I mean, and that would take like a whole year mm. to try and decipher 
is for how long should I date so that I can catch all the red flags, you mm -hmm. know, all those mm -hmm. things. However, there are some that are very obvious when it comes to personality and character. Because remember, during dating, those are the only things you're living by. You're probably not living under the same roof to catch any other. Mm -hmm. But if someone is over-possessive, you know, like they don't want you to have a life, basically, questioning your phone calls 24-7 or... Um, you know, just following, like, caging you in a way that you're not living as a person. Mm -hmm. It's, you're being tied into a unity now. It's us you, against you the world, the but I'm not me mm -hmm. as a person. Correct, correct. That's already a red flag. Another red flag would be their social behavior. How do they relate to other people? Remember, we mentioned maybe they could be a darling to people out there. Mm -hmm. If you find that it's very cosmetic from the very beginning, now that they don't have anything to to share out there because you're not living together. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, they don't have a social life. They don't have friends. They, they're not in it. Like, they're just in this cocoon. That's another red flag because you'd like to wonder what where are they coming from with this mindset that I don't need people. Correct. So at, at some point, mm -hmm. will they need you? Yeah, that's that's, that's exactly. Yeah, that's so correct. when it comes to those, again, it, it's um, it's another relative mm. arena mm. because even snapping at you, that's a red flag. But again, maybe someone had a bad day, so I'm not saying you be snapped at one day you and you conclude pattern, that no? this is an emotional abuser. Pattern, yeah. Exactly, there mm. needs to be a constant pattern, mm. and now that begs the question of how long. Again, that's relative. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, before we take a we, we take a short break, um, I would want to ask: Can a person be an emotional abuser without knowing, right? And what are some of the attributing or causative factors that can make someone become an abusive person without knowing? By the way, I could be manipulating my girlfriend. I could be manipulating my boyfriend. Is it what? What are some of those things that pre make can make one, you know, an emotional abuser? that they need to look into? Um, the most um, profound one is trauma. And when I say trauma, is maybe childhood trauma, whether it's female or male. If you grew up in a very abusive setup and you think you dealt with it, and now this is my life, I'm, I'm trying to make a family, that's my past, but you never dealt with it as a person and brought closure, then you are a good person but carrying baggage mm. and that baggage now will trickle over to the next relationships that you go into yeah. whether it's church because you've become a pastor or yeah. even you're not in a relationship but you're a father a priest mm. in mm. church mm. it's going to go into your congregation or your fellow uh, um, you know uh, priests mm -hmm. i'm saying i'm giving that example because when you talk of relationships, remember, at times it's even workplaces. It's even, you know, for people who choose not to get married, but they still emotionally abuse mm -hmm. their co-workers, their colleagues. So it's about baggage that you carry from the past. There are people who, had, who have been hurt, and there's this saying that hurt people hurt others. Absolutely. So that could also be an indicator that, you think you're not being hurtful because they're very, most of the time emotional abusers are very defensive. Mm. They don't see it yeah. and they never get it. And, that and that's why they don't yeah. apologize yeah. Most, yeah. more often than not mm. because they don't see it. Correct, um, correct. I don't abuse you. How do I? Mm. They'll actually ask you, how do I do this? Yeah. And it might not be pretending because they've created a wall mm -hmm. because of their past. Yeah, you know, yeah. one of the characteristics of an emotional abuser that you just made me, made me remember is they always make it seems it's always your fault. It's never their fault. Exactly. And they never apologize because it's never their fault. And probably yeah. we can revert to now the mm. triggers, mm -hmm. I mean, or red flags. Mm -hmm. That that can also be added into the into, red flag. Into the red flag. Yes. This person never apologizes. It's always your fault. Exactly. Even if it's clearly something they did wrong, they will make sure they'll turn the whole story to make sure. The shoulder, wilder, cooler is always on you. You should have done this. You should mm -hmm. have. I, I talk to you badly mm -hmm. because you annoyed me mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. yeah. i i called you a troll because you didn't explain to me where you were mm -hmm. i mean it's always pushed back to correct, you correct yes you know one of the things that i am a psychotherapist myself and one of the things i tell my clients in in counseling is 
you have to treat yourself like someone you're responsible for caring all right that is the first rule of the thumb when you're interacting with people treat yourself as a you know so would you put someone you're responsible for caring in that in a relationship that they are Should constantly that. abused abused that Should and that. we'll come back and we we'll take some questions from our audience thank you so much Phyllis Macheri for that beautiful conversation now we're going to take a short break and when we come back the audience will be asking a few questions and i'll be reading your comments that i'm sure that are coming on our facebook page as i mentioned go to our facebook page at y254 channel and comment there make a ask a question or make a suggestion and i'll be reading out those comments in a few when we come back i'll be taking a few questions from the audience and we keep this conversation going short break we'll be back page at uh, y254 channel uh, we are talking about emotional abuse in relationships have you been in a relationship with somebody who you felt emotionally abused you and how did you deal with it that's the, that's the, the questions that are being asked there please make your opinion comment or uh, question and i'll be reading them out uh, there is Victor Light who said, I overcame it through struggling for mine. I'm not sure what that means, but I get Thank you, Victor Light. Just for Musioka boy, Salimia Fili Sana. Come Salimia. And Apia Nib students. Ayakia Nani. Keep it locked, keep it locked. Kara Morris, Hapa Kutoka Ruiro, Kimbo. Show you top. Yeah. Hey, Kara Maurice unajulikana, eh? Salimia Nick Daniels hapo, na mbogi yote ya 1-4, eh? <laughs> eh? Mbogi, mbogi zwa kimonyoski wa mesalimia na katelo, eh? <laughs> kwa na rieng, eh? Aya. Victor Light again, wearing, akia nani, I don't understand, wearing a bro's shoe, then he ashamed you in front of neighbors. Hey, manze pole sana, okay. Uh, that's not the emotional abuse you're talking about, but thank you, eh? Okay. <laughs> then, la la la, ni just fat mat musioka. Uh, Kutoka Konza, yeah. Just what you always watch my show, and I really appreciate. I hope one day you can turn up as part of the audience. Show you top fire. Here, topic here. Leo, he could uh, do. Sijawi ko in a relationship. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll do something about that. Uh, I can't miss the show. Thank you so much, Josphat. And then Lillian Muli, brilliant conversation. Phil is amazing. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Lillian Muli. Keep those uh, comments uh, and questions and uh, suggestions coming on, on uh, our Facebook page, and I'm going to be reading them out in a few. So right now I'm going to go to the audience for uh, the, the questions that we have. We're going to take the first three questions. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. My name is Peter Sondora. And my question is, um, basically these people may be termed as like alpha males and they are mostly very much aggressive. So getting that you are dealing with somebody who is aggressive, so how should you turn up or start speaking to that person that you are doing this to me? How should I now start going to the person and tell him or her, this is what you are doing, you are bringing me down in a way, but when you go to the audience, you are very much different. Mm. How do I face the person abusing me? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Peterson, thank you. I'm Christine Oedimo. Christine. How can you be able to change an abusive person back to normal? Can you change an abusive person back to normal? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent question. By behind there. Hi. Hello. I'm Joyce. Joyce. Um, many a times we come out of relationships, then we go into new relationships mm -hmm. with, let's say, there are things you want your partner to to fulfill expectations we fail to f we fail to remember that maybe our partners will not be able to fulfill our expectations maybe we want more mm -hmm. they can then they can give that wow. so how we talk to them and maybe get to know whether they feel they are comfortable with that or not okay so if i get your question is how can we talk to our partners to ensure that they are able to fulfill the desires that we have so that we can be in the relationship. Is that, yeah. is that, is that right? Yes. Thank you so much. Let's first of all take those two, three questions. Sure. So uh, the first question there, how do you face yeah, an abusive relationship person? Um, the remember I talked about boundaries, right? You first need to exhaust all avenues in, in trying to make, you make yourself be heard. So, for example, I talked about negotiation, I mean mediation, where you involve maybe uh, um, if you were in a, you know, in a marriage that you married in church, there's always the best couple. You know, there's always a hierarchy. There's a time to go to the parents. There's a time to go to the in-laws, you know. All I'm saying is exhaust your options. 
But now you have to know when to stop. Because is this going to be a lifetime event for you where you just recycle every in interventions that you have applied? So you have to know when to stop. And it still goes back to being real. Do you think it's going to be any different? Mm -hmm. And that difference, does it come from you or from them? Mm -hmm. So you have to be very conscious and you have to set your boundaries. These are, Time waits for no man, and that's the mistake we make th when we stay in abusive relationships. Because you end up losing out when you really could even have helped the abuser mm -hmm. be a better person by leaving. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, but in, in that instance, is, I, I think what I can add, uh, maybe this person is very good at making you be at, the, at fault. Yes. So, possibly confronting them. They will only turn the story around and make you feel like, look at how aggressive you are. Right? Exactly. So, okay. And uh, that's why I said, uh, you, now you need to stop asking those questions mm. because you're just feeding an ego. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you're doing. You're just feeding an ego. Correct. Yeah. The second question was, can you change an, uh, an abusive person? Uh, Wairimu, mm -hmm. Nimsi, because I'm also Wairimu. Uh, no. And it's just a plain no. You can never change someone. You can facilitate the transition. I mean, we pray. See, you're interceding for someone. You're praying so that they can change. But never, and that's since time immemorial, that's the mistake we make. Because out of love, out of care, you think you're in control. You think you can handle this. But always remember, no one can change unless they change themselves. You can never change someone, trust me. They can change because they love you. But remember, it's them who change, not you. And a very constant characteristic of an abuser, the more you try to change them, the higher dose you will get of that abuse. So you can never change someone. Absolutely. Always remember that. You can never. You can facilitate by mm. taking care of yourself first. Okay. Then they can now change because of the change they're seeing in you. But you can never change someone. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much. The, the third question was uh, the desires that someone, uh, I have desires, okay, can, and the other person, how can I be sure that the other person will, you know, fulfill those desires that I have in that relationship? Um, it's one thing to have expectations. And I believe when we have these expectations, it's because you want a better life. You want to have a good life. So you need to separate, again, the expect, because I'm thinking you're asking that question in lieu with the fact that that could be the reason you're being abused because you expected much from this guy or this woman and they cannot provide. Honestly, those are two different things, but always that the abuser will take advantage of and pin you down for. So it's you, first of all, to be real about your situation. I find it very cosmetic and unfair when you know that you're in a relationship that honestly you know your expectations are in 2020 and you're in 2013. And no, I mean, allow me to be the devil's advocate. Most men suffer with that notion than women because it's probably more often than not, than not it's pressure from a woman's idea of Prince Charming, you know, especially the emotional bit. Him, he's busy trying to make sure there's a lot of money for you because according to him, that's what satisfying you is. But for you, where are the flowers? Where is the call? How am I doing? So you need to be real on the stage you're in and separate dating and marriage. Those are two different entities, even with expectations. Because it's, it's unfortunate that we're in an age that the expectations that we give when dating are honestly very, very unfortunate and sad. Mm -hmm. Because I'll, ad I'll also address the women here. There's a mantra I've always had, and this is very conservative in my opinion. If someone is not your father and they haven't put a ring on it, what expectations should you be having, surely? You get what I mean, especially when it comes to finances. So you need to be real. Divide all these segments. Are we dating? Are we in a marriage? And then put it on the table. It's from putting it on the table now you can be able to pick some red flags 
of an abusive person or not, but not from expectations. Mm -hmm. That's okay. my personal opinion. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now we go back there to the second, to the last batch of our questions. Go ahead. Um, my name is Nicholas. Nicholas. Uh, With a suit, yeah. Wishing Masanga quick recovery. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, assuming that you've just dated for three months, three to four months, then you fall in love, that you start dating. Uh, yeah, then uh, the person you are dating, maybe the, the man, starts being starts uh, abusing you emotionally. So, what advice could you give the person who is being uh, who is being abused? Okay, so if I get so, so, be, oh, sorry. Yeah, so what advice would you give someone who is being uh, okay. abused? Okay, All right. okay. Then behind you. All right. My name is Lillian. Lillian. From uh, this discussion that you're having, could you say that uh, having a post-traumatic stress disorder is one of the consequences that someone can go through when they experience emotional violence, and to what extent should they? feel like it's time to just quit yeah okay got that question and then lastly right in front here to the gentleman here unfortunately you might not have time so what's your name yeah go ahead there right there okay you had a question right yes i had a question please go ahead <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you um dennis uh, smart well i just had a simple question like let's say for instance you have tried like to say like this person will change what like is there a time like you can say that like i've given him uh, a chance he's not changing can you is there a time like you can say you're ready to quit for the relationship okay yes. okay thank you so much please feel free all right um as I was saying, when you talk of um, exhibiting emotional abuse, you mean when dating? Like when you're still dating or after marriage? I, no, the, um, the, the gentleman in a suit. Allow me to, <laughs> to refer to you. Maybe you are, you are just friends. You are in that yes. process. You are uh -huh. approaching the dating process. Then after, after starting the uh, after you start now the relationship, the guy starts abusing you emotionally. So what advice could you give the lady? Um, again, I would still take you back to that merit I talked about. Eh? You need to also, I always say, first examine yourself before you go to someone else. So if you, if you, you truly have no hand, and again, I'll make this disclaimer. I'm not saying that you have to be blamed to be abused. But of course, there's some factors like, uh, that contribute or even feed that abusive environment as a person. And an example that I will give is, let's say, if if for real you keep nagging, you keep, you know, you know, ukweli. They say sumbua when you sumbua, right? Those are the things that you need to to be aware about yourself. But it still doesn't give the person a right to belittle you. Remember, we have specifics to emotional abuse. So be aware of what you're referring to as emotional abuse. I mean, someone refusing to take you f to carnival for a date, that's not emotional abuse. And they have reasons. And remember, we talked about a constant pattern. You know, always putting you down. You're successful. Like, if you have your successes, you've graduated, they have nothing to say about that. They, they don't rejoice in your achievements. That's a red flag. With that, I would advise them to stop it while it's still early. And remember, you're talking about two, three months. A marriage should be for eternity because I'm, you know, I come from a Christian background. That is what is baseline. However, there are situations that, you know, if it's a life and death situation, and life and death, remember, we don't mean physical. You can, emotionally, you can die, and that means you're a shell. So you, you need to live early enough. Um, on PSTD, what you call post-traumatic uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, it actually goes both ways. Even for the abuser, that must that might have been the beginning of them being an abusive person, and now for you as a victim, it's your beginning. But for the abuser, it's their end game. So it's like a vicious cycle. So when it comes to that. A lot of 
being aware about the situation because remember as i said when you're talking of relationships it can be the dating or in a marriage so if it's dating you probably will see ah me i don't have time to deal with this because remember even if it's someone who has a problem even if it's someone who was abused as a child you have no obligation to take care of them as you lose yourself that's very important so you can facilitate and give them ideas of how they can take care of them if they get to a point where they have healed and they can no longer abuse and only God knows if you can ever even patch up from where you left. But don't take care of someone else at the expense of your sanity and the, at the expense of your health. So know how, when to cut that mm. boundary. Mm. And for you, again, I cannot say this enough. So Jesus, sir, you live and call me Miss. Be real. Mm. It's just about checking yourself and be real and call it quits simply because for real, it's not working for you. It's working against you. Perfect. Please, yeah, we, we, uh, appreciate, appreciate, uh, please. I'm going to read a few comments here. Um, Betty Chepsom, what a great show and nice topic. God bless. God bless you too, Betty Chepsom. Then, uh, Josphat uh, Musioka, uh, good night to everyone watching the show. Today's show has mentored my friend who is passing through emotional abuse. Thanks so much. Josphat, good night. Uh, then we've got, uh, uh, thank you, Josphat. Then Kiddy Melody, hashtag the Power Talk Show. How do you help one who is experiencing emotional abuse to overcome the situation safely without, getting, without anyone being hurt? And how do you deal with people who go through emotional abuse when they insist to stay in a relationship where they are emotionally abused and also physically abused? So those are two questions that I think you have handled one partly. Uh, so how do you help someone who insists on staying in an abusive relationship? Then Silly, oh sorry, sorry, Sly, <laughs> Kiki, hello, the show has been so amazing and educative from it. I have learned to never to make someone a priority. Shout out to Pauletti, Deno, and all the audience present. Make some noise for yourselves, <laughs> man. All right. All righty. So uh, please handle that. My, uh, my, our time is out, but you can, I'm sure you can answer that yeah, question briefly. In, in a nutshell, mm -hmm. remember emotional abuse can also be, end up being fatal. Simply because it's not physical doesn't mean that it cannot lead to a physical affair, even to yourself. We've had numerous suicides simply because you are emotionally abused. So when it comes to that, I also urge everyone to be your brothers and sisters keepers. Mm -hmm. Should you note that something is amiss, you can try and intervene. You can try and stand in the gap. However, I cannot insist enough. There's a question there, what do you do to someone who has refused to leave? Ajafika mm. Misho, they are not at it can be very bad to the outside world, but trust me, the minute you get to the wall mm -hmm. is the minute you engage your brains. So in that particular situation, you can only intervene, be there for them, maybe make sure they don't harm themselves in any creative way possible, take them out, be there as often as possible, but the back stops at you who is the victim. Right. You're the only one who can change mm. the environment for yourself. It is said God created you without you, but he cannot save you without you. Exactly. Meaning you've got to do, you've got to accept the invitation. Yeah? Exactly. Right, so uh, thank you so much for watching. There is one gentleman here. What's your, what, please pass the mic quickly to this gentleman in white. Uh, who is, who's, uh, who's mom is celebrating a birthday? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. sorry, it's a birthday, sorry. Yeah, yeah pass, yeah. also you, yeah. uh, just a quick shout out. Yeah. To your who is celebrating the who is, whose mom is celebrating birthday today? Is that you? Ah, yes, the lady. Please go ahead, chop chop. I wish a uh, shout out to your mom. So, hi, mom, wherever you are, I know you're watching. Sarah Nyambura, happy birthday to you, and I love you so much. So, Sarah Nyambura is there. Hey, so, happy birthday from 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 the Power Talk Show from Y254 Mami, and may God bless you so so much. And thank you again once more to my audience. Make some noise for yourselves.
Thank you so much, Phyllis Wairimo Masharia, for being part of this show and sharing uh, so deeply about emotional abuse in relationships. And I'm sure you have helped both the audience and viewers at home. Thank you so much for agreeing to be part of the show. And I want also to thank you all for who for watching the show and enjoying it. And I hope you have learned something. And also we keep praying for Enoch Masangu, who is part of this show, that he, he recovers and gets well and joins us with the, with the live band next uh, on, uh, in the coming show. So God bless you and see you next uh, Wednesday on 17. That we shall be talking more and more to keep educating and, uh, and getting entertained.